Welcome viewers. Our guest today is Miss Victoria Sol, producer of the movie The Swedish Trapper. Welcome Victoria. Thank you for having me. Welcome. So first of all, please tell us about yourself in your own words. Uh, okay, so I'm, uh, I'm from Sweden. I'm a journalist student uh, and I'm uh, 25 years old. And I'm uh, usually very enthusiastic and uh, always looking for new possibilities. <laughs> Good. Talking about the movie, The Swedish Trapper, so what inspired you, encouraged you to make a movie here? Oh, well, I heard about the story uh, of uh, Gus Hedin from my dad uh, when I was like 16 years old. Uh, and uh, he told me this really fascinating story and uh, it kind of stuck with me. So when I, uh, uh, I graduated high school, I felt like I really want to make a movie. And uh, so this story popped up back in my head. And uh, so I thought, okay, let's just do some research because I didn't know who this man was, didn't know his name. I, I barely knew where he came from. I just know he, I, I knew he was Swedish and my dad had met him in Australia. Uh, and uh, so we, we emailed campsites in Australia because he had lived in a, in a caravan or a trailer, as you say here. Uh, and uh, and we got his name, so they were like, oh, it's a Gus Hedin, perhaps that you're looking for. It was a really small town. And then so we googled his name, and suddenly it popped up, like Fort Saint John, uh, Charlotte Lake tragedy. Uh, so that's how we kind of found out that he had been up here. Right. And who were the other co-producers and team members who worked with you in this project? It started with me and Ellen Jonsson, my friend, and then. Uh, uh, she couldn't come with us to Canada, so my other friend Matilda Bloom, she joined me uh, to film up here in Canada. And then I got this uh, really amazing animator, Charlie Schöld, or Charlotte Schöld as she likes to be called. And she did some amazing animations in the film. And then also got some help with the editing from uh, uh, Josephine Linder and uh, with the sound from uh, Nils Lehmann. Great. And who was Gus Hedin? Tell us a little more, please. Yeah, so uh, Gus Hedin, uh, he, uh, he came from Sweden, a small town of Örebro. And when he was 26 years old, he, he got this letter from a friend up in Canada saying, oh, he should come up here. So he, he came, so he went by boat, uh, ended up in Halifax and somehow ended up in Fort St. John area. And uh, he bought a trap line and started trapping. So he came up here in 1926. That's fascinating. Yeah. So 1926 and traveling all the way from Sweden to Halifax and Fort St. John and Charlie Lake. Yeah. Uh, obviously, this is fascinating, exciting, you know. And about him, what was the 1942 Charlie Lake incidents? Please tell us more about that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one morning in May, he had breakfast, he had built his uh, little cabin next to the lake, so he had a really nice view. Uh, so he was looking at the lake as he made his breakfast and he saw like a boat. And the next thing he looks out and the boat is gone. And he just sees little, little things start popping up and down in the lake and he realizes that the boat has uh, sunk. So he runs down to the beach to his uh, home-built boat and he rows out and it's about two and a half kilometers out and he can only pick up two at a time in his small boat and then he has to row back and he rows back out and he rows back out like uh, three times and he managed to save uh, five people. Great. And so Gus had in here, he saved human lives and there's a famous quote of John Hardy, it's all about saving lives. Would you like to comment on this? You never expect, I think, unless you're like working in, in the police or fire fighter, <laughs> I don't think you expect to, to be faced by, by having to suddenly save people's lives. I think for Gus Hedin that was a, a big surprise, but uh, what's uh, really impressive is that he didn't hesitate to go out uh, in the stormy weather, in the really high waves. Great. That obviously makes him, you know, by all means a hero, a real life mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And please tell us, where else did the adventures of Gus take him later? 
Okay, so he moved uh, from Fort St. John in Canada uh, when he was like uh, 1952, I think, about that time. And then he moved back to Sweden. He thought he would retire and take it easy. Uh, but he came to Sweden and he, he realized he, he was hungry for more adventure. Mm -hmm. So he joined a circus for about a year, a traveling circus around Sweden. Uh, but then it says in, a, in an interview he did with a Canadian newspaper that he, he didn't like Sweden. He thought they were too regulated by laws and taxes. Uh, so he actually moved down to Australia uh, where he became a crocodile uh, hunter and he hunted for crocodiles and sharks uh, and then he yeah he retired <laughs> after after a few years right and as I read a little more details about it I found it was uh, partially in Tasmania mm -hmm. and also in Darwin which are again all the way north and south yeah and similarly here the adventurer came all the way from Sweden to almost North Alaska Highway mm -hmm. and then went almost to the South Pole, you know, towards that side all the way to Tasmania and all this was decades ago. Yeah. So how do you believe some legends are remembered after their life? Yeah, that was that's a really fascinating question. Uh, it was really um, fascinating for us to, to go down and talk to people in Australia who knew him as a neighbor and as, a, as an old man. And a lot of people knew different things from him. And uh, a lot of people didn't know about this uh, tragedy that, that had happened in Canada. And so it's really fascinating how people remember people. Because uh, sometimes uh, the truth and what you think is the truth about a person isn't what's actually real. A lot of people down there thought that he had won a medal in the Olympic Games. So down there is kind of known as this uh, Olympic hero that's won the medal, but that medal in fact was probably the medal from, from uh, the Humane Society of Canada for saving all those lives. Excellent. Yeah. That's the real work. And you know, remembering people after decades for their nice good work, mm. we feel proud of it. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. And how did you enjoy visiting Charlie Lake and the Peace Region? It was uh, amazing. Uh, Larry Evans and his wife Joan Evans was really kind to drive us around. Uh, so we got to see all the parts of uh, Peace River and uh, meet all the local people. To see Gus Cabin that is still there. Uh, the roof is caved in but it's, it's still kind of standing. Which uh, it was really lovely and it's a... Uh, People are really kind. <laughs> Thank you. Our community is friendly and yeah. it's beautiful and fascinating. Thank mm -hmm. you for the compliments. And how did you enjoy visiting Australia? Uh, that was uh, that was as well. It was a great experience. Uh, that was the first trip that we went to to film. So it was uh, uh, it took a while to get into the filming, but people are so really like opening the doors to us. So we could come up and like knock on the doors uh, without them even knowing we're supposed to arrive. Uh, and people are just uh, taking it really well and uh, they'd love to share their stories, which is uh, it's really lovely. Excellent. And overall the story is about helpfulness, it's about the rescues he made, mm. uh, his traveling in the wilderness yeah. in all those days when many areas were not, you know, connected and the remoteness could be felt. Mm -hmm. So going all these places in those years, uh, almost century back taking off and starting and going in all these parts of the world and then what made him a real hero was again you know the Charlie Lake incidents too so what are your comments about that that helping people how far do you think it goes well it obviously goes very far I think uh, by the accident the tragedy when that happened those soldiers were building the Alaska Highway at the time and obviously the Alaska Highway is now in in good use. So I think that it's a good thing to remember that when, as you drive up the highway, that a lot of people have actually sacrificed their lives uh, to build it for us to use today. And uh, we, we should probably remember that and not take it for granted. Too. By all means, we honor them, we remember mm -hmm. them, and we continue these discussions to tell, you know, the coming generations also because we owe them. And thank you, good points. And 
Finally, what are upcoming projects and activities of your team? Right now, uh, we all do different things. Uh, I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm just about to graduate for my bachelor exam in journalism, and then hopefully I'll continue working with uh, uh, documentaries. Good, thank you. Yeah. And why did you decide to have the movie animated? Um, that actually was something really wanted to do already in the beginning. That was kind of a dream uh, because we didn't, from the start, we didn't have any pictures of Gus. Uh, they kind of came on later as the project went on. Uh, but we still also really wanted to portray, because we hadn't met Gus and we only had people's stories about him, we kind of thought it was fair that he somehow got a voice in this documentary that is about him. So when we got uh, articles, uh, and interviews from when he <laughs> actually spoke with his own words uh, and we actually also uh, got the testimony from Gus from the tragedy so we thought it was a great idea to animate uh, animate the story from Gus's perspective so that we actually get to hear his story in his own words it's not really edited that much at all Superb and your dad met him Mm -hmm. There was one point here, he also had sadly some broken heart, is it true? Yeah, so he, uh, my dad got to hear the story told from Gus that he had left Sweden uh, because his girlfriend of the time had broken up their engagement and maybe also she had found uh, another man. So he was broken hearted and uh, he left Sweden. And then it's very unclear. A lot of people had described Gus as a bachelor, uh, a proper bachelor, who liked living by himself. Uh, but he obviously had friends. Uh, but yeah, he never found, he never really found a woman as we know of. So how are you promoting the movie? Um, I showed the movie in May this year in my hometown of Uppsala in Sweden. Uh, and about 60 people came. And then we also showed it in uh, Gus' hometown of Örebro, where it, it was uh, really well received. A lot of his uh, relatives came down, uh, so they were really, it was really heartwarming to, to see their reactions, and it was all positive comments, so it was really nice. If you missed it at the museum, uh, we will eventually put it up online in the beginning of next year, but also the museum is going to look into uh, to see if, uh, if they can get some DVD copies out and then you can go to the museum and ask for that. Thank you. So it will be available in the Fort St. John Museum? Yes. Anyone wants to view it, they can call the museum and they can get more information? Yeah. So always consider making more documentaries about our beautiful peace region? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if I get the chance, definitely I wouldn't miss it. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for coming to our program and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much.